Adidas has reported first quarter sales up 1.9% or 10% at a constant exchange rate. The German sporting goods maker has reiterated its goal to grow revenues by 10% this year. With us now is the CEO, Kasper Rohrsted. Uh, Kasper, I have to say that... Um, Good morning. The, the currency story here is amazing, and the sales growth, I'm sure, will be impressive uh, for investors. But the conversation is all about Kanye West after his slavery comments. Before we get into the earnings picture, how do you uh, how do you how do you interpret what Kanye said? You know, we neither comment nor speculate on every single comment that our external creators, you know, are making. Kanye has been and is a very important part of our strategy and has been a, you know, fantastic creator. And that's where I'm going to leave it. I'm not going to comment on, on every comment that he or somebody else are making. And that's where, uh, that's pretty much the party line at this stage. Casper, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I just want to carry on the conversation, though, for a moment. Um, you don't break out what the what the relationship is worth, what what the Easy Brand is worth to you. Can you do that for us to give an idea, to give investors an idea of how important what is being said by Kanye is to your business? Could you give us those numbers? Um, have you had any conversations with he, with him, or his team in the last 24 hours? I, this is something that that. Um, from, from, from his end of the, uh, of the uh, conversation, he makes it very clear that this is an, this is an important and very profitable business from, from Adidas's point of view. Can you give us some numbers and, and kind of talk to investors a little bit about how important it is? So if you look upon our overall numbers, last year we did almost $25 billion. We're a very large company. And uh, Kanye and the Yeezy is a very important part for our brand. You know, from a revenue standpoint, less so, but it's a very important you know, part of how we promote our products, particularly in the U.S. and other parts of the world. At the same time, our Adidas brand grew the last quarter in the U.S., you know, 23%. We're growing 11% on the Adidas brand. So while Kanye is a very important part of the Adidas brand, Adidas is a large global company that with a very, very strong presence around the world and uh, will continue to perform well. Casper, I hate to press you on this, but, you know, if someone makes comments that are around the issue of slavery and sort of implying that that was a choice, that goes, I think, beyond just your average comment by an external collaborator, especially for a German brand like Adidas. Isn't it important to get in front of that kind of issue before it becomes a real problem for the entire company? Of course it is. You know, I saw the comment, uh, as you have seen it, I've not had any you know, con you know, conversation with Kanye in the last 24 hours, simply also because we have the earnings around. And we are, it's very clear to us that we're a sports company. We want to, you know, change people's lives through sport, which is a very important part. So, of course, that we will have conversations. But I do want to focus on the core of what the company is about is, that is, delivering the best sporting goods products in the world and having our consumers buy those products. And that's what's happening right now in the marketplace, as you can you see very clearly from the results we just published. Absolutely. Just final question on the subject, and then we'll come on and talk about the business. Have you had any conversations within the business in the last 24 hours about dropping Kane? No. Okay. Have you already had any conversations within the last year about dropping Reebok? No, not at all. And we are very confident that we'll turn Reebok around. If you look upon where we're coming from, we said we have a four-year turnaround planned. You know, the first step is to make Reebok profitable again, which we're very well in the process of doing. We need to get growth back into the U.S., which we're doing. We had that at this quarter. We are growing in Europe. There's two countries in the world of significance that we're not growing, which is in Japan and in Korea. I'm certain that we can get Reebok back to growth, but profitable growth. And at the same time, we need to continue our expansion strategy with the Adidas brand, where our three most important markets in the world are growing more than 25% or approximately 25%, America, online, and China. So a very strong performance from the overall group standpoint. How important, uh, Casper, is our swings in the euro to you? I mean, clearly, uh, you're a German company, but you manufacture and sell your goods all over the world. Um, what have you seen as far as currency swings in the first quarter, and what do you expect coming? So if you look, we grew 10% currency neutral, so to speak, and 2% nominal. So we had an 8% currency loss. 
all our product costs are related to dollars, so quote unquote, we get more affordable products, but we record less on the top line. I think that the role of a CEO in a large company is to manage the volatility over time. And you know, two years ago, when we had currency tailwinds, nobody spoke about it. Now we have currency headwinds. Our guidance is irrespectively of, of that. And you can see growing 2% on the top line normal, we grew the bottom line 17% with overproportionate investment in the brands. We're not saving ourselves to, from a brain standpoint, to the numbers that we are reporting right now. So I think that currently we're managing the situation quite well. Yep. And we'll continue to have challenges. Sometimes they're for us, sometimes they're against us.